strength to be bold and take risk. The touch women say what they feel and be oh a moment there. <laughs> I, I, I think it was the a really touch, long even your power, so much power. Yeah. The touch where women share. Hello, 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 everyone. It is indeed Thursday night, and you know what that means. It's turn up. No, I'm just kidding. It is Vault Talks Women Share. We are elated to be on the air with you guys. So happy you guys are joining us on this beautiful Thursday night or whenever you're catching us. So for those of you who may be newer to Vault Talks, thank you so much. There's tons of things you could be doing on a Thursday night or whenever you're catching this. If you're catching it on the replay, if you're catching us on YouTube, you're here, and we're happy. So Vault Talks Women Share is indeed a platform where women can come together to learn more, to share more about matters that pertain to their world. It's indeed on this platform here where we talk about leadership, entrepreneurship, relationships, fashion, fun, health, but most of all, ways to be empowered as women. So Isha, the influence. What's up, girl? I feel like I ain't seen you in a long time, but it's, it's been a while. <laughs> you know, you you've been touring and, and all of that, so um, I hadn't had a chance to to catch up with you. But congratulations on that, first of all. Thank you. Thank um, you so much. Yeah, a lot has been taking place, and like I said, we haven't been able to talk. No, but. <laughs> Um, both good and bad, you know, you just have to find the balance. And that's what life is about to me is just, you know, finding the balance and continuing to push on um, and love yourself. This is the message that I've been preaching and I feel that it's the essence of everything. And that's what's really been helping me stay grounded and find my center. So that's what's been going on. With the you said a whole lot and we ain't even four minutes in. Um <laughs> No, you're absolutely you're 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 dead on. You're spot on, and um, you know it's interesting because um, you mentioned the tour, so I'm gonna talk about it just a little bit. Um, I don't even know where to start. It was a phenomenal start. Um, I am a part of a tour. It's called Level Up 2021, and it's just that it's myself and six dynamic women, where the visionary is. Um, really to help women level up. And it's not just for women. It's for anybody who is really ready to really take their life to the next level. And so uh, we kicked it off in Houston, Texas. Um, the weather was rainy. I mean, when it rains in Texas, it rains in Texas. Yeah. Um, but the amazing thing about coming together with other women who share the same vision as you, um, the room was just, it was it was fire. I mean, they were really impacted by the messages that we had and they were super elated about the fact that we were there. They were hungry. We were ready to give. Um, I can't even go into really explaining the atmosphere. I mean, I've I've talked on different platforms and the atmosphere in the room, you can mm -hmm. tell that it was just women loving on one another. We had men there as well. Um, our photographer, dope cat, super dope. He was catching the nuggets and keeping them, you know? So we dropping them, he catching them. And so it was really cool to even see him to be able to interact and, you know, gain knowledge from us. And, you know, um, we're in such a place where it's really time to go to the next level, whatever that looks like for us. And leveling up can be difficult, but it's doable. And, right. we, and my message was just talking about shifting from your now to your next and realizing the power of the I am. Mm -hmm. And, you know, starting with the I am to be that shifting for you. And for those of you who are kingdom citizens, you know, he is the I am. And so you are the I am because he is the I am. So you catch that and run with it. But it was really powerful. So, um, thank you. Um, we're going to bring on somebody very special. We have a new co-host that is on the platform with us. She is not new to me. I have been knowing this woman for, it seems like, 
30 some odd years, but it's only been since 2016, 2015, something like that. And one thing about her, she's the real deal. When I tell you she's the real deal, she's the real deal. She's gonna give it to you straight with a smile or not, but she's gonna leave. <laughs> she gonna give you the real deal. So uh, I am so excited to bring her to the platform all the way from Virginia, my sister from another mother, Shalia McDaniel. Here she is, boom, Pam and pow. What's up? How you doing? Hey. Hey, 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 great to be here. I feel good. We're happy to have you. Called you called it right. I will absolutely give it to you straight. <laughs> and I love it about her. She does it all the time. She gets, she, you know what? You need people in your life that are going to give it to you straight and keep it real. And, you know, um, if your people in your tribe, and I, and I talked about that on Saturday, the difference between having a team and a tribe, you know, a team, they going to make sure you win or, you know, that's the goal. We're going we gonna to strive. We're going to go in one direction and we want to win. But a tribe helps you win and build. There's a difference because when you're a part of a tribe, we put in work. We're going to get results. And so, you know, I'm going to keep it real. If you if your breasts think, I'm going to tell you, you know, all that good stuff. But Shalia is the real deal. <laughs> um, tonight's a very special night. And um, <laughs> you're, catching us, you're catching us 30 minutes after the fact. But you're still in the building. You're still in the place. And we're happy to have you here. Um, so this is our new time, 7 p.m. Central mm -hmm. Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we're here for an hour, hour of power, um, and so really excited to talk about tonight's topic. Um, we have somebody very special in the background, and we have other special guests who are going to be coming too. Now, we attempted to do this show about a month ago, but um, our special guest, Taylor Carr, she's a doula. And literally, there was a birth the night that we were looking to do this show. So it was like, what can you do? You know, right. baby show, baby show. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So um, we're excited that she's with us tonight and she is cracking up in the background. <laughs> um, and the amazing thing about this, we had Viola Hall who was going to be on tonight. However, we, are, we got a really special treat for you guys tonight. We have. If you caught us maybe a couple months ago, we had a vegan chef on the show. Well, the vegan chef is Taylor's significant other. So we got a powerhouse on the platform tonight talking about vegan, all things vegan. Then we got the doula. We got so we got your holistic health in the building. Yes. We're excited about that. My girl Rachel Wright just dropped in, so she can talk about all things vegan as she is a vegan herself. So we're gonna get this thing popping. But first, quiet, it's quote time. Come on through, Isha the influence. Her, I'm sorry, her. <laughs> Go ahead. I got you. So uh tonight's quote is there is a difference between the knowledge you choose and the knowledge that you are given. And I chose this quote because um, we're talking about holistic health and holistic health is not something that is generally taught. You know, that's not common knowledge or common practice, but it's becoming more popular now. Um, so these are the things that, you know, you have to choose to know about versus being forced or it's just something that we grew up knowing, you know, in grade school or whatnot. So the difference between what you choose to know and what you're forced to know is the impact that it has on your life once you apply it. Ah! Roll that back. <laughs> so the difference is the impact <laughs> that it has on your life once you choose to apply it. And I say this because, you know, what we choose to know, especially if it contradicts what we are taught, you can definitely see a difference. And as we are talking about holistic health, we're talking about, you know, using um, more natural ingredients for treatment and healing of the body versus uh, pharmaceutical medications and that type of thing. Those are the things that are common practice. Those are, those are the things that we know that leads to other problems. But choosing holistic health um, actually benefits you, you know, 10 times more than what is common. 
So the difference that you will receive once you apply something that you don't know, but choose to, like it's not common, but you choose to uh, give yourself this knowledge, it'll it'll give your life a world of, of difference in, in the change that you'll see. I'm going to trust you on that. But before we dive in a little further, we're going to bring Rika Wright to the screen. Hello, Rika Wright. They call her talking about the credit plug into his house. Come on through, love. Why can't I see? Can you see me? We can try that again. We gon' we gon' we gonna do that again. Oh, you there? Well, she gonna she gonna come on through when she's there. So um go ahead and um Shalia, do you have anything with that? Yeah. The part that gets me is to know. Right, the difference to what you choose to know versus the knowledge you're given. Because oftentimes, you know, you find yourself in conversations with people. It, it reminds me of trying to have a reasonable conversation with someone who isn't reasonable, right? So you can have knowledge that's given to you, but if you have in your head that this is the way that I want, it goes against anything that you want to live, do, say, or believe then you're not going to receive that knowledge and apply it. You're going to, you're going to apply it. Choose. Um, so being in the headspace that you're willing to see a, see and hear something um, outside of the world that you live in and be willing to receive it as maybe this, there's a shift to happen when challenging ourselves and the things that we need to do Personally, it's hard to change, right? It's hard for us to change as an individual. So it's key to understand choosing knowledge and when you're accepting the knowledge that's given to you. Absolutely. <sighs> I don't even know what to say. Um, this is a topic for me, just the whole health piece of it. Um, wrapping my mind around you know, living that holistic life, like I totally understand. Um, but that, and that takes like really reprogramming your mind to really say, okay, I decide to live this lifestyle. So let's talk about the power of a decision. We make decisions all day long. Am I going to put on these earrings, red lipstick, pink lipstick, the hat or no, fill in the brows or no? Um, lashes, yes or no. Okay, those are basic decisions that might not be, you know, so meaningful to somebody else. Let's get deeper. You know, um, am I going to avoid this situation um, so I can have peace in my mind? You know, like what you, what are you, what are you wanting to make that decision to do? Um, and this one, I know that I'm supposed to be eating differently. And it's an off and on process for me. And for the longest, I couldn't understand why, but I get it because I haven't been like fully sold out to my decision. Um, what am I saying? You can know and still not apply or know halfway apply, <laughs> real talk. And I know that I, right. like right now I'm in the gym. So being in the gym, I love it. You know, I did a full body workout today and I forgot that there's muscles I haven't used in quite a long time that are aching right now. Okay? But it feels good to be back in that environment. Now, if I can only get my eating on track, then I'd be winning. And there's I pick moments on when I want to eat right and when I don't want to eat right. Um, even though I know that I should be going in this direction. So I think a lot of it is that really just making a clear decision I'm being sold out on something. Um, and yeah, that's a start and stop, and it's a start mm -hmm. and a stop. But if you are consistent with the starting and the stopping, at least you're in the game. Eventually, you're going to turn over and say, you know what, I'm done stopping. Let me be more consistent. Um, and that's and that's where I'm at, even just with my health journey, You know, making smarter choices. Now, I'm going to tell you where I went wrong. I'm going to be honest. Um, I've been out in and out of town for two weeks and I was at my grandma house. So you know what goes down when you at your grandma house. 
you coming off the diet. I, you know, you're going to try to stay as consistent as you can. But sometimes it's just food that you can't have on a regular because you at grandma's house. You know what I'm saying? And in the South, that's where you get the real sweet tea. You know, the real sweet tea. And they don't say tea. Would you like a glass of sweet tie? And you'd be like, yeah, I want, I want that right there because I know. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know it's the real deal. Um, and and so that that's been my struggle. So now I'm getting back to my routine of things, um, bedtime and all that good stuff. And anyways, but you're right, the knowledge part of it. We know, and the more that you equip yourself with knowing that you need to make a different decision, it allows for you to be like, okay, let me just surrender. Um, but it, it's it ain't easy. It's it's not easy. So um, I commend those that are you know, full-time sold out and eating right all the time. And even when they cheat, it's like not really a real cheat, you know, according to like how we would cheat, you know, cause we're not sold out the thing yet. So, but I believe that um, we're here to learn a lot on this platform. Um, I'm super excited to bring her to the platform. Um, her name is Taylor Carr. She's amazing at what she does. She's passionate at what she does. Me and her were talking the other day, just, um, you know, she was asking questions about, you know, what to expect in being on the platform. And I just, I just felt her heart and her passion for what she does. So we're going to go ahead and welcome Taylor Carr to the stage. Welcome, my dear. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, yeah, guys. Energy. That energy right there. Hello. That's what I got, girl. That's what I got the other day. I love <laughs> How are you? I am lovely. How are you guys? How are you ladies? We're excited. We're excited that you're here. Um, you know, I was like, oh my gosh, is another baby going to be born? You know, today? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> nope. I hope not. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about who you are and, you know, what you do. Um, so I am Taylor. I am the owner of Herbadula LLC. It is a birth service. Um, whether it's, well, we do more than birth, whether it's womb healing, um, herbal medicine, um, whatever you need, we got it. So, um, if you have experienced stillbirth, if you've experienced problems with fertility, wow. um, abortion, whatever you need, I support you in that decision. Um, I also work on the herbal side. So we, my, my business name is Herbadula. So. Um, I specialize in herbs and I, whether it's looking into your natal chart and figuring out if you have a problem within your natal chart and then solving the problem spiritually and then working with herbs physically to help you resolve that problem. Um, I do a lot of that and I, that's same with womb work. So, um, whether it's going, fixing your, your menstrual cycle, we're looking at moon cycles, we're doing whatever we have to do to involve mama. Mama is who I call um, the creator. So whatever we have to do to fix our relationship with the creator in order to fix our physical problems first. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of what I do. I support women, whether it's going to get an abortion, I educate them on the whole process. I go with them to do that. Um, same with miscarriage, if they need someone to go with them to the hospital, if they need someone to come take care of them while that's happening. Um, I do that as well. As far as um, birth services, I'm a travel doula, so I do a lot of travel births. That's why it's so hard to get a hold of me because I'm always on the move. Um, yeah, so what else? What else do you guys want to know? <laughs> I, know what? I have tons of questions just based on what you just said. So yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. And especially for somebody, you know, I don't have children uh, mm -hmm. that are here on the planet. Um, so what I mean by that is I have got children and yep. I love them the same. Mm -hmm. And um, So it's interesting because you said something that I'm like, whoa, never heard of that. So can, let's talk about womb care. Mm -hmm. Can you can you share a little bit about what that is? Because like I'm I'm all in. Like I want I want to yeah. know more. Yeah. So um, womb care can range from anything as far as trauma from like your grandmother, um, trauma from your mother. Maybe that was passed on. 
um, and now you are suffering room problems because of that, um, or whether it's patterned into your 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 human design, your body makeup. Um, we all have natal charts, so um, things are destined, things are written in our script before we're even here, you know? So certain things as far as fibroids, um, endometriosis, stuff like that, PCOS, those things are already in us from the time we are born. Um, so it's a lot of figuring out the root of that issue. And if some of these ailments develop over time throughout your life, we figure out what you're doing in your life that is causing these issues. So whether it's you're sleeping around a lot or you're not taking care of your your feminine energy, you know, um, whether you're just not taking care of your body or your feminine energy, that creates a lot of blockages in your body, that creates a lot of blockages in your womb. So um, we basically go really deep into figuring out how to solve that issue that is contributing to that. Also issues such as whether it's drugs or alcohol or just anything like that, bad food, bad diet, anything like that that contribute to harming you, your womb. I really work with women on how to resolve those issues first. And then we go deep into the healing mechanisms, whether it's sound bathing, whether it's Reiki, whatever we do, um, we just really go deep into healing. Right. So you wow. do it all. Yep. We do it all. <laughs> we do it all. So yep. I, I heard you say something that was really interesting to me because I'm into um, the natal charts and I mm -hmm. try to convince people that I know to kind of get to know theirs so they can get to know themselves a little bit more. But I've never heard anyone speak on it in terms of like a health thing. Yep. So, you know, you can read like health issues through the natal chart. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold yep. on. Before you, before you go into that, can you explain to some of the viewers... Who this may be fresh lingo to what is a natal chart so a natal chart is basically your where the planets are when you are brought into the world um so you know everyone goes by their sun their moon their ascendant those are basic signs that we know so mine would be scorpio cancer cancer that's what basically everyone knows but there are 12 or 13 other signs whatever astrology you believe in that also contribute to your makeup. So um, there are certain things in certain houses that just contribute to how you are. So for certain, if you have maybe a moon or Mars in your sixth, eighth or 12th house, you might have those fibroid issues. Um, so just that strong, intense energy in those houses and all that just really contribute to certain issues in your health. And that's called medical astrology. There's books written on it and all that. That's interesting. Yes. Um, as like I said, I, I use it and I try to convince other people to use it to kind of get to know themselves, their different mm -hmm. energies, you know, what they're good at, what they're pretty much predestined already to do and achieve and accomplish and that type of thing. So it helps a lot with purpose and, you know, trying to figure out mm -hmm. your path that way. Yeah. So the medical part is, is very interesting. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of studying, to be honest, um, but it's very interesting and it's very helpful. And I honestly, I haven't met anyone who in person who is does medical astrology. So I'm the only person I know of right now. So it's mm. yeah, it's very it's very rare. <laughs> That that is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So out of all the things that you do, what would you say is like your most favorite thing to practice? Um honestly attending births. Um that's probably my favorite thing, whether it's whatever birth it is, whether it's a stillbirth or it's a normal birth or it's cesarean, whatever it is just being there for mom and watching them transition into woman to mom. Um, that's one of my favorite parts of being there. Also watching babies come earthside is just super incredible. The energy in the room, everything about it, whether it's like the smell, the energy, 
everything. So it's just a truly beautiful experience. Um, to be a part of life, it's just, it's just very, I wouldn't say overwhelming, but it's just very, it's powerful. Yeah. It's powerful. It's mm -hmm. very powerful. Yeah, I definitely get it. Yep. So um, what advice would you give someone who is considering, you know, going the holistic route or the natural birth route and having a home birth versus going to the hospital? Um, I would definitely say make sure your health is in order. Um, high risk moms, we have a very strict rules on high risk moms and home births. Um, I work a little differently. I am open to whatever mom wants. So if you have a breech baby, I will be your doula. I will help you through that. If you have twins and you want to birth at home, I will be your doula and I will help you through that. If you have HIV and you want a doula and you want to birth at home, I will help you with that at home, you know? Um, so a lot of people work differently. All those scenarios would be high risk. An average midwife would probably tell a patient, I mean, a client to get an OB instead. Um, so just really making sure your health is in order. Um, also making sure that you're healed. Um, trauma can be brought up during labor and delivery, whether it's sexual assault, whether it's death trauma. Um, maybe you have lost a child previously and you've given birth before. There's just every, there's a lot of scenarios that go into making a birth scenario what you want. Um, so, and also I would say if it's your first baby, um, definitely do your research, um, whether, and not just like research on doulas, research on everything. So there's a lot of supplies. There's no medicine, there's no pain reliever at mm -hmm. home, you know? Right. So know your pain scale, just stuff like that. Just really know yourself and study yourself and study birth and make your decision from there. Now, you mentioned uh, being healed. Do you require your clients to kind of go through any type of therapy before, you know, you give birth? Any so, anything? so I work with most of my clients um, doing my energy work with them. Um, my clients come out very strong and just they know that they are worthy in the end. Um, so we do a lot of spiritual work while we are together in our period of time. Um, a lot of my clients I work with from the time that they are fertile, that they are practicing conscious conception. So we are able to build that healing relationship and I'm able to help them ultimately do that for their experience in the end. And same with their partners too. Their partners are always with us, whatever, every step of the way, their partners are there too, because we're all family. We're all our village. So we all have to be there for each other. Um, so a lot of the time, my clients in particular, um, they are rock stars in the end. Um, they, they know how to do it. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. That definitely sound like, you know. <laughs> this is interesting. I'm just sitting here listening like, wow, like a little kid <laughs> off. <laughs> like, wow, we holy cow. <laughs> Um, I'm just being honest. Um, because you know, first of all, I think women, pregnant women, are beautiful. Uh, I it, I have to really restrain myself to wanting to rub on bellies and stuff like that and talk to tell me like random strangers. Um, to me, it's just a beautiful thing. Um, one of the things that I'm really listening to is, you know, from some for some people, uh, I'm sure this is new information, and just really broadening people's perspectives on birth. You know, we see on TV a lot of times, you know, water births, this, that, and the third. Um, doulas are really becoming super popular. Um, people are really being familiarized with all of the work that you guys do, which I love that. Um, so what would you say to somebody who, um, you know, is wanting to do a water birth, have a high tolerance of, you know, uh, doesn't have a high tolerance of pain, excuse me, but still wants to go through it? Like, how do you prep them mentally? For so we basically do a lot of just breath work. 
Um, my main thing mm -hmm. in labor in labor and delivery, what you really need to work on is controlling your breath, controlling your breathing, controlling how you speak. Just everything is a very mindful, um, you, everything's very mindful. So um, I really go over that with them from the beginning all the way into the end. And we really focus in the tri third trimester, we really focus on whether it's yoga, just teaching them ways to relax their body um, naturally, whether it's we, I teach them about essential oils, um, different herbs we might use, um, just really preparing them. I, I really educate my clients. They're very, very, very educated. Um, I lend them books for them to be able to do that. Um, so just really, I just really educate them. Um, we, we really just go on on breath work. Breath work, I know I keep saying that, but breath work is really where it's at. Um, whether it's sitting there, we do sound bathing. So that really puts them on different frequency levels. Your, your breath changes when you're diff on different frequency levels. So um, just a lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of breathing work and a lot of meditation. Um, okay. They have to know how to calm themselves, yeah. um, just like a toddler. When toddlers don't know how to calm themselves, we have, if we haven't given birth, we've never been in, we've never felt those types of sensations. So um, even doing like different exercises with them, whether it's like holding ice for a certain amount of time or just different things. I just really help them learn what labor is going to be like. Holding ice, like ice cubes? Yes, ice cubes. Hold them ice cubes, girl. Yep. What does that do? So um, ice just really numbs your hand. Um, and after it's numb for a while, it becomes not painful. I call them sensations because I don't, pain is associated with fear and all of that. Um, mm -hmm. So just different sensations. They become very tingly. They become numb. It's just uncomfortable. Um, so I want them to know what being uncomfortable feels like. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. This is fascinating. So I was hoping that you would talk about something and you did. So yeah. I'm glad that you're opening the door. So you were mentioning herbs and yes. essential oils and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're talking about holistic health and pregnancy. So what if someone that you're working with may not be holistic at you know, the beginning, you know, but you, there, there, is that something that you um, encourage them to kind of work on while they're pregnant or, you know, we just incorporate herbs, you know, here and there, like how does that process work? So, so herbs are always included in my business. I'm an herb doula. So everything I do is herb wise. So, I provide them with their pregnancy tea. I provide them with their belly butter. I provide them with their nipple cream. They basically have no choice but to use my products because I'm providing them. Um, they're included in their package, um, whether it's breast milk tea, whether it's a bath soak, whether it's black and blue cohosh to, for induction. I also offer herbal induction. So um, just whatever they need, I got it. Um, and then just certain methods for, a lot of the time, clients really want herbal use for induction. They don't want um, any unnatural induction method. Um, so we go really deep into using, maybe it's a massage they get, um, whether I make them a induction tea that has like black and blue cohosh um, for their ankles, clary sage and jasmine, just different herbs contribute to circulating you differently. Um, so those are mainly the herbs I use. From the beginning of time, they're using herbs. Um, they all love tea, they all love their bath soaks, um, their belly butter, they, they love it all. And I make it right here at home. So I think that also makes them feel a lot more comfortable because it's designed for them. Um, whether some of my clients don't like certain products. Some of them have hyperemesis. Maybe certain products don't work for them that work for others. So um, I create tea blends that are for them and only them. Man. 
We can't hear you, Isha. No. Nope. Shalia, do you have anything? Rika, I know you do. Hey, y'all. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> yes. Yep. I can hear you. Nice, nice, awesome, awesome. If you see this setup I have here, you'd be like, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> Look, nothing, was, nothing was nothing working was working. Tonight. You hear me? Listen, so, Linda, in the garage. Listen, huh? Linda, listen, listen, Linda. That's why my my you can't see my face. My internet is acting the fool. I'm like, you know what? As long as y'all can hear me, we are a okay. Exactly. I'm in the garage and it's just yeah, yeah. But um <laughs> so, so yeah, that's yeah. super dope. I love everything that you know, you know, talk about regarding childbirth, and you know, that, that was def definitely different experience for me. <laughs> but um, I, the body butters and the belly butters, I needed that. You know, I have stretch marks. Well, the last week, the stretch marks appeared. I was like, oh, I'm good to go. Yeah. Stretch mark fully, and then <laughs> the last day, it was like, <laughs> so um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I definitely love that. The you know, the breathing is definitely important. Definitely important. And so I did have a question. Um I know like normally the term used is Lamaze, right? For breathing. Is that um the same as breath work when it comes to teen pregnancy? Yeah. So breath work, breathing, same thing. Same thing. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. There are different well, we patterns that but, I yeah. really go into, um, but all of it is the same. All of it's the same. Just being intentional okay. with how you breathe is right. all the same. Yeah. Right. So um, I need to get my hands on some of this uh, blessing oil. We got, <laughs> we got Chris talking about the blessing oil is my favorite. And then, <laughs> hi, Tiffany. Welcome to our platform, love. And she talked hi. about I can't live without the blessing oil. People are always asking me about my glow. Look here, listen, Taylor. You, oh, you talking about I need to use this. I need to use this instead of using a bronzer. That's what I'm. <laughs> yep, uh, that's why my skin looks like this. A ladies' blessing oil. So the ladies' blessing oil is really good for um, acne scarring, um, blemishes, red eczema, paralysis. Um, really good for all of that. It's also really good for um, menstrual cramps, um, PMS symptoms, menopause symptoms, all of that. Um, whether it's you have mood fluctuations or you have cramps, um, I recommend rubbing it on your womb, doing that breath work, and um, both of those things together will eliminate your cramps. Um, and then just for your skin, it's really good too. So I use it on my skin faithfully. I originally created it because my son has eczema. He was born with eczema. I don't know what happened in his transition. I'm looking at his chart. Um, so that's one of my projects right now is looking at his chart. Um, he was born with eczema um, and I created it for him. So it really helps his eczema. And then I was like, okay, maybe I should sell it too. So that's how we got the ladies blessing oil. Um, I named it the ladies blessing oil because after I saw what it did for eczema, I saw what it did for women. And that's where my my niche is so that's why it's named that i love it i love it we're gonna take a small commercial break and we're gonna be right back don't go anywhere your time is very precious and wouldn't you agree that it's time to stop wasting it does this sound familiar are you not fulfilling your potential? Are you not reaching your goals? Are you not even setting your goals? Are you feeling unmotivated, feeling stuck, and you need accountability in your life? Searching for the right answer, the right solution can be difficult and lonely. You get vague information. You're pointed in the wrong direction. You receive bad advice. No one wants that. And there must be a better way. Well, there is. At All About One Leadership Consulting, we can help you. At All About One, we help individuals and organizations achieve their goals, get unstuck, and reach their potential. 
contact us today. And we're back just like that. Oh, I did not mean to rhyme, but I did. Okay. Um, so we're here. We're talking about holistic health and pregnancy. Um, we have Taylor Carr, the Herba Doula. That is her brand. And we're excited because this is something that, you know, I know for me, um, I don't have children. But what I love is, you know, hearing about the different ways that women are now able to give birth. Um, Cause I always said, if I got pregnant, I would definitely have an epidural. I am not one that likes pain. Um, I, I, I still ask God, like, um, not where do babies come from, but how do babies come out of there? I, I still don't understand that part. Uh, I don't understand how I can stretch that big to have a whole baby come out. So, you know, that's, a, <laughs> I know. <laughs> It's fascinating. I'm like, wow. Somebody was like, Takar, you need to be in the room. But I don't like, know. I don't need to be in the room. I don't need to see that part. But yes, you do. Um, it's different every time. Too. It's never I might, the same. I might paint somewhere. Um, but um, what I what what I do love about our platform is that we're able to really bring information to our listeners, to our viewers. Uh, to be able to really understand that, you know, there's so much that goes on in the world of women. And so, Taylor, I just want to say to you, like, mm -hmm. your capacity to really share this information is so big. And, you know, as you're sharing, I'm like, you need to be on Dr. Oz or something. <laughs> you know, like, someone needs to, like, really hook up with you and you just share all this information because you're a wealth of knowledge. Um, so I don't know if we actually got to this question, but what made you go into this industry? You know, what was that thing that you were like, you know what, I'm sold out. This is what I want to do. Um, I think just recognizing that I'm a healer. Um, it wasn't from the beginning. I've been really good with babies. I've been really good with pregnant women. Um, I've always been a big nurturer. Um, and I ultimately would like to be a midwife. So at the same time, I am a, I'm a money person. So I have to think about what's going to help me become a midwife and follow my dreams at the same time. And I found birth doula. Um, and that was about three years ago. Um, I just quit my job a few months ago and I do this full time now. So I'm really, really whether it's my what whatever work I'm doing, I'm really diving into it. So just recognizing who I am, recognizing my purpose, recognizing why I was brought here, um, learning how to read the my inscription on my bones, my, and just doing what I was brought here to do. You know, so um, that's what made me do this. I was, is, I was I was made to do this. <laughs> that's powerful. Now you speak in my love language as the identity architect. You talking about living in purpose, being sold out. Know that that's what you want to do. I was first here to do this, and th and that's what I'm gonna do. Ah, wow, wow, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Um, you said something earlier, and um, I want to speak to this as well. So you were talking, you were talking about, um, you know, traveling, and I've never heard of a traveling doula. Maybe that's because I'm new to all this. So, um, what does that look like? Because that means that you have to really be on time. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it's a lot. I do a lot of stress management. So I have to spend my alone time too. So travel births are a lot. Um, I usually like to be there 24 hours before their due date. Um, due dates are most of the time not accurate. It's usually two weeks plus or minus. Um, so if that is the case, most of the time they're calling me and they're in labor. So if that's the case, I jump right on the next flight. Um, most of my clients are right here in LA. I'm based in Las Vegas. 
Um, the drive to LA is four hours. Labor is probably 10 hours plus. So I make it there while they're in labor. If I drive, if they are elsewhere, I hop on the, the, the next flight. Hopefully by the time they tell me that they have I'm a very detailed person, so I'm always asking for details from my client. I need to know what time you lost your mucus plug. I need to know if your water broke, what color it was, how does it smell. I need to know everything about everything. Um, and that's really how I make my judgment. Most of the time I know they're in labor before they know they're in labor. Um, wow. And I don't let them know until I'm there. Um, wow. That, that really puts stress on me during my travel time. So. Um, <laughs> When I show up there, um, I'm ready to do what needs to be done. And I stay with them for a couple of days. And if they pay me for postpartum care, I stay with them for a week or so. Um, so just really, it takes a lot of detail, a lot takes a lot of planning um, and a lot of rest. So yeah, that's how I do it. Man, you said mm -hmm. that. I, I, you know what? <laughs> oh, baby, so. so you, you hop on a plane, train, whatever it takes to get there. So do you give like a, a pain package um, like before, <laughs> before I know I'm getting ready to go to labor? Cause I ain't going to see you for a couple hours. Like, what am I going to do? Um, so I'm always virtual. So airplanes, Southwest, Southwest has Wi-Fi. Um, I, I take Southwest, they have Wi-Fi. I'm, they're able to communicate with me the entire time. Um, I don't go ghost on my clients while they're in labor. That would be terrible. Um, so yeah, I just, we just really keep constant communication, whether they FaceTime me, um, they're calling me, I have to sit on the phone with them and teach them and breathe with them and talk to them, give them affirmations, whatever they need on the phone. Because I also do virtual, so I, I'm very good at doing virtual services with clients. So we at that point, they're my virtual client, and then I switch over to, you now you're my in-person client, you know? Wow. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating. I commend the work that you do. So that was going to be my question. How do you... Sorry, um, it's breaking up. Yeah, so how do you manage those clients that are like nervous and they don't know that they're in labor? Have you, has there ever been a time where you didn't make it, you didn't get there before the birth? Um, I have never missed a birth, and I don't plan on it. Um, I Like I said, I'm very detailed, so working them working with a very good midwife or a very good OB lets also lets me know what's going on um i like to have them have me on the phone at their last appointment that's closest to their due date so i can know how far along if they're effaced completely if they're dilated completely if they have bloody show if they have lost any mucus plug if their water has broken if their water is broken i'm getting on the plane um, if their water hasn't broken and their mucus plug has came out and they have bloody show, I give it two to three days before they go into labor. So I always look at the signs that are given to me and then I move based off of that. Um, a lot. So I've never missed a birth. Um, I, I worked under midwives and I know well enough to where I know when I need to make my moves now. So before it was a little like, okay, but now um, I just know. And when you're on call, you don't really sleep. Um, I, I, I'm on call from the time a client is 36 weeks. So a lot of that time they're having Braxton Hicks, they're having false labor. So I'm, I'm always very, very attention, all they have all my attention the entire time. Um, so. I just think me stalking my clients is like the only way to to know. Yep. So that's what I do. Yeah, so I would I would guess that if you take any information um having them I guess along the different stages to you 
continues to be aware and pay attention to those things. So are, do you have multiple clients at once or do you just take one client you know, at a certain time? How do you make your business? So if I have a, um, I usually take one client per month. Um, it just depends on the package they sign as well. So if they're a travel client, they're my only client for that month. I have to travel back and forth. I can't be in two states at one time. Um, they're my only client for that month. If I have a virtual client and I have a travel client, that's fine because I don't have to travel to my virtual client. I just have to be on the phone when they're in labor. Um, so it's I, I work out in my schedule to where I know which clients I can take and which clients I can't. And I always make sure that I refer them to somebody that I know is a good doula if I can't. Um, but most of the time we figure out something that works for us and we go from there. But I've had, I've had clients do in the same month and maybe they give birth. I space them out to where their due dates are two weeks plus or minus. Um, so we don't overlap and we don't have that problem. And if we do, I have a backup doula. Um, she goes and she sits with that client. And so I get there if births do overlap. Well, the first thing I'm gonna ask you is I need you to teach me some time management skills, please and thank you. Uh, do you give courses on time management? I mean, cause you got it nailed down to a science. Um, I just go with the flow. <laughs> no, um, well, with the flow. There's, I need some, I need some of your uh, flow because <laughs> look, you talking about hopping on a plane, look here, this, that. I'm like, listen, um, <laughs> just the level of communication that you have and the, the time management that goes into that, you know? Um, so let me ask you this because this is really something that I'm like, Ooh, I, I'm really wondering if you mm -hmm. know this part of it. I'm sure you do. Um, as long as you've been in business, how many of the moms that you serve are first time moms? Hmm. I would say 50% of them. What? Um, what? Yeah, about 50% of them. A lot of the moms that contact me are moms who want to do what they want during labor. They know what they want, they know what they don't want, and they just want me to make it happen. Um, first time moms are more than likely to labor in the hospital. Um, coming to me, I teach a lot of natural methods. So, um, and I also do a lot of unassisted births. So a lot of those are first time, not first time moms. Um, so yeah, uh, most of the time it's 50%. I really, I take first time moms for the sole purpose of education, um, for the sole purpose of healing and all of that. And most of the time, if they're interested in that and they're interested in herbs, that's when they come to me. Um, but yeah, most of the time the moms have already had kids. They want, they want a home birth. They want a doula who's gonna let them do what they want. They want a doula who's gonna let them relax and labor on their own and use what they know and what they've been taught. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Something just came to my mind. Um, mm -hmm. Like you were mentioning, traditionally, you know, first time moms, they do go to the hospital um, to have their babies. Uh, some have them vaginally and some have to do the cesarean section. Yeah. So have you ever had a client that had complications to where, you know, the doctor would opt to do the C-section versus um, having it vaginally? Do you come across any issues like that? Um, yes. Yeah. So I've had mothers who plan a completely natural hospital birth and go in and they end up having a cesarean. Um, it happens a lot. It happens because maybe they had a poor OB. Most of the time, that is the reason they had a poor OB. They have an OB who isn't giving them attention during their prenatals, who isn't spending adequate time with them. And those are a lot of those first time moms. Um, they, these first time moms, they don't know what pregnancy is like. They don't know what to look for. They don't know what they're lacking, what they need more of, you know, um, they, 
and a lot of them don't plan for this, you know. Um, second, second kids are most of the time planned by families. Um, these these first kids that come around, they they aren't planned for the right way. So that also leads to different complications in the end. Um, but as far as like doctors, I feel like that is mostly the biggest part, whether it's rushing clients to finish labor, whether it's a late diagnosis of whatever, preeclampsia, that is one of the main things going on is late diagnosis. Um, whether it's maybe they have high blood pressure all of a sudden um, due to the epidural that you talked the first time mom into getting. Um, there's just there's just a lot of different things that contribute to the prevention of first time moms being able to birth vaginally in a hospital. Right. Um, and a lot of them, a lot of the problem is they, they just aren't making informed decisions because they don't know, you know, right. no one, no one taught them and, you know, it's not their fault. So that's why doulas are coming around, you know, so that's just a lot of, a lot of what goes on. Woo -wee! Wow, we can go on and on and on. Thank you so much for tonight's show, Taylor. We thank you so much for tuning in. Everybody who's been a part of the show. Um, Taylor, we're gonna have to have you come back um, mm -hmm. because you. there's so much more information that our audience can definitely learn from you. We mm -hmm. wanna thank you just for your time and what you do and how you show up in this earth for so many women and families. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated. I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm in awe of just the work that you do. Um, and I had no clue that, you know, I've heard of doulas. I just didn't know exactly of everything that you guys do. And so I have a whole new wealth of knowledge. And anybody who's watching this will as well. So um, we're going to go ahead and close out the show tonight. We want to thank you guys for all being a part scrolling across the screen at the bottom if you guys want to reach out to taylor there you are urban doula llc baby yep. she got that knowledge for you all day long and twice on sunday so yep. you to make sure you connect with her and if you know somebody who is looking for an amazing doula someone who is really um about giving information beyond information, beyond information, because that is what you can do all day. I'm sure if we let this show go for about an hour and a half, you could take it all by yourself. So <laughs> we thank you guys for tuning in next week. Next week, we have the coaches huddle, the female coaches huddle, that is. And I'm excited about next week because we have an amazing show where it's going to be talking about eliminating excuses and i got a special mm -hmm. guest for us that's coming on as well but you ain't got to go home but we got to get out of here love you much been an amazing show and we are out peace and love and hair grease baby women share good night to be bold and take risk the touch women say no <laughs> moments here. <laughs> I, I think it was Don't a really talk, long leaving your power. Week. So much power. Uh. Yeah. The talks where women share.